Justin is a historic brand made in the USA, but like many other US companies, they've been outsourcing some of their boots to China and today I have a Justin Stampede boot. This is gonna be the first extended test where I try out a made in China Justin. Let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya And then I'll be on my way Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig. Thank you for coming back to the channel. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. I'm really excited to get into today's extended test video. I know many of you out there have been asking questions about the Stampede or other Made in China Justins. So I found this one on shopgoodwill.com. It seemed to be used for like an afternoon and that's it. It's still brand new. So. I'm gonna use this opportunity to do an extended test. Luckily, I got these for under $20. So if you guys are interested in finding some, you know, slightly used boots to keep a lookout for, definitely consider shopgoodwill.com. It's a pro tip, pro tip for those of you on a budget for real. And I got lots of other videos to help you with your used boot search above. But for this one, let's get into the rundown. All right, this is the Justin Stampede model number 2551 and it features Sorrel Apache leather made to look rustic and it's also a little bit waxy so it may lighten up as you wear it. This is the Huck Brown color. The Justin Stampede features an Arto, which is a medium round. It also stands at 13 inches tall. Down here we have about a 1 and 5 8 inch composite heel and we have a rubber outsole. The heel and the outsole looks very much like an Ariat Heritage Arto, which I recently did a video on. You can see that above as well, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's from the exact same factory. On the inside, we got a leather lining, which appears to be pigskin leather lining, at least on the shaft. And then around the foot, we have a cloth lining and for an insole we have their jflex removable foam insole and it looks very much like an ats on the top but uh, there is no gel in it like the ats from ariat it's just foam down here feeling very much like ariat's all day cushioning insole and underneath the insole we have what justin is calling their triple density insole board which is part of the jflex system and that's at least one layer of foam on top. And I don't know what those other two layers are gonna be, but uh, I can pretty much guarantee that they're not gonna be leather. As I mentioned before, these are made in China and they retail new for $99 at amazon.com. Now it's time to try on these boots to see how they look and feel. All right, I got the Justin Stampedes on right now. This is size 11D and usually I have to wear an 11D. Technically I'm a 12B, but I always find myself sizing down since so few retailers carry B-widths and it's definitely hard to find B-widths on the second hand market where I found these ones, but 11D works a lot of the time, so I'm definitely not gonna let it stop me from testing out these boots since most of the time I have to try out D-widths. The tops are really, really wide. Um, if you can see here, really wide tops here, guys, which is, pretty ordinary for made in China boots or just budget boots in general. Um, so you might have a little trouble finding jeans to cover all of that. Um, these jeans seem to be doing fine. Uh, they are sagging in here a little bit. You do see the boot printing a little, but uh, these boots also might break in a little bit. We'll have to see how it goes. They had been sitting in a box. The insole feels like uh, an area insole or Anything else that you've tried from China, probably it's just normal. Uh, I can't say that there's any extra cushion or less cushion. It seems pretty comparable to Ariat. All right, here's the POV. That's the Arto. I really like the look of the Arto. It's one of my favorite toe shapes, just all around. Good to go for whatever. And that brown is just normal. This looks like a work boot. Speaking of working, let's get at it and try these for an extended test.
I was in for a messy day when I arrived at a western New York dairy farm to help a local pest control company spray for flies. Spraying for flies makes a huge difference in how much milk cows can produce, and we're not talking about ounces, we're talking about a couple of extra gallons from each cow per month. So I suited up with the proper pest control attire and prepared myself for the crappy experience that is a dairy farm. My job was to haul the spray gun and the hose into the barn when the cows were out for milking. Then, as the certified professional sprayed, I was to pull in all of the slack so he could concentrate on spraying and not pulling around the hose. Luckily, they cleaned out the next run before we sprayed the other side of the barn so it wasn't as sloppy. I worked in a dairy barn occasionally when I was in high school, so I'm pretty used to this. It doesn't mean that I like it, there's just a moment when you get used to being around so much shit. After the inside of the barn was complete, it was time to do the outside. I quickly found out that some places of the outside were just as sloppy as the inside of the barn. After finishing up the inside and outside of this barn, we were running low on formula, so we had to go get some more water. Once filled up and the formula mixed in, we headed back to start on the next barn. On a dairy farm, everything revolves around when the cows get milked, so it was a race against the clock to try to get this barn done before they returned from milking. We were on the last section of the inside of this barn when the cows came home, so to speak, so it was up to me to herd them back and buy us a little bit more time to finish up the spray. We finished up so the cows could go back to doing what they do best, eating so they can produce more milk. The Justin 2551 definitely wasn't the best boot for this type of work, but they survived the day. Yes, tall rubber boots are what you really need for work in a barn like that, but extended tests are hard for me to come by, so I gotta take what I can get. Using a boot like this every day in a barn like that will rot this out in a couple of months. But it's all I needed to round out my opinion of these Justin 2551 boots. Now it's time for the final thoughts. These boots were a mess when I got back, but they cleaned up nice with some mink oil. So they are back to looking pretty nice. I mean, working in a barn like that is definitely going to take a toll on it, no matter what you do. I know many of you are wondering how these compare to the Ariat Heritage Arto, since they look so similar. And there's only a few differences from what I noticed. The first is, the top on this Justin is wider than what it is on the Ariat Heritage Arto, which is already wide to begin with, but this is obnoxiously wide for no other reason other than cost savings. The opening size of the top is supposed to be proportional to the size of the foot, but that just means that in the factory they have to make more cuts for different sizes. So if they can just cut out the same size, top for many different size boots, then that means they save costs. So sometimes, depending on the size, you might get a proportional width up here, but on other sizes, it's gonna be obnoxious like this. This has the widest top of any boot that I've ever tried. I think the widest up to this date that I've tried was the Dan Post Milwaukee. This one's really obnoxious. It is so hard to find jeans that fit over this boot. The other difference is with the insole and the footbed. The Ariat Heritage Arto has a removable foam insole thicker than the J-Flex removable insole and a compressed footbed under that. As we saw in the first impression, this Justin 2551 has a thinner removable insole and a padded footbed on top of their compressed fiber. So it's pretty much just two different ways of getting the same amount of cushion for cheap. Neither have the most cushion that I've ever felt before. They basically feel pretty much the same. 
Since I recorded the first impression, Amazon has run out of stock of these boots, and I think that Justin has discontinued this model altogether. They still have some Made in China boots on their website, and you can tell by looking at the rubber outsoles, but I'm definitely not sad to see them go. After trying this boot and the Ariat and thinking about which one I would choose, I would still choose Ariat, and here's why. It's what Ariat does. It's their brand. You see, Justin has over a century of history making traditionally made boots right here in the US. And it wasn't until the year 2000 that they were sold to money-making machine Berkshire Hathaway that this changed. In my opinion, making a boot like this is terrible for the Justin brand. And it's terrible for their history. Mainly because they are not as easy to repair as some of their traditionally made boots. If you wear a hole in this outsole, if you get any damage to this heel or anywhere else on this boot, it's going to be extremely expensive to repair and also a little bit risky. So it really would just be more valuable to just buy a new boot altogether, which is not what Justin Brands has been traditionally about. Yes, Ariat has the same issue with their boots not being as repair friendly, but again, that's their brand. Justin isn't the only classic brand to do this. Tony Lama, Nakona, Dan Post, they've all made cheap boots in China, offering nothing unique to them. They let brands like Ariat and Twisted X do the innovating and then they just copy it. Just look at this made in China boot on Justin website. It has what they call J-Vent. It's exactly like Ariat's Ventec, which was developed by Ariat. Yes, many of you know that Ariat has sponsored videos on this channel, but that hasn't stopped me from making these same criticisms about the quality of their boots. It comes down to the fact that these classic brands feel the need to copy the newer brands, and it's just downright embarrassing. They should have just stuck to what they do best, which is make quality, traditionally made boots right here in the US. That's why if I was going to get a made in China cowboy boot, I would go with a brand that did it first. But that's just me. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here so you don't miss any videos. And I'll see you next time. Peace. Love you guys. Bring back the history. Bring back the quality. Instead of copying those new brands with growth and your brand malady. Oh, that's what I think. Why don't you check out this other video up here? Or I got a music video down here I think you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace. Have a good one.